Corey Feldman has no idea what it's like not to be famous. He was just three years old in this McDonald's commercial. McDonald's gift certificates. I literally was famous before I knew my own name. His roles defined the 80s. Goonies. This was my dream, my wish. Stand by me. You call my dad a loony again, and I'll kill you. License to drive. The only difference between you and that greaseball is that he has a license and you don't. (laughs) Films that propelled him into the spotlight for his entire youth. But being famous so young, he says, caused serious damage to him and his friends. Do you feel like you missed out on a normal childhood? (laughs) What childhood? (laughs) I don't know what that means. A lost childhood and a loss of innocence. He blames the adults, not just those looking to profit from charming children, but also some with far more sinister motives. I can tell you that the number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia. That's the biggest problem for children in this industry. The casting couch even applies to children. Oh, yeah. Not in the same way. It's all done under the radar. Nobody talks about pedophilia. It's the big secret. And it's widespread? Oh, yeah. I was surrounded by them when I was 14 years old. Surrounded. Literally. Didn't even know it. It wasn't until I was old enough to realize what they were and what they wanted and what they were about and the types of people that were surrounding me till I went, oh my God, they were everywhere like vultures. Vultures who Feldman says abused him and his best friend, the late child actor Corey Haim, his co-star in The Lost Boys. Well, what happens if my mom is dating the head vampire? Feldman says the trauma of that pedophilia contributed to Haim's death. There's one person to blame in the death of Corey Haim, and that person happens to be a Hollywood mogul, and that person needs to be exposed, but unfortunately, I can't be the one to do it. But the person that knows who did it and knows who he is is watching right now, I guarantee you. Hmm. Yeah. Intriguing. Yeah. There was a circle of older men that surrounded themselves around this group of kids, Hmm. and they all had either their own power or connections to great power in the entertainment industry. Feldman won't name names. And he admits his friend had a struggle with addiction, which he says was a mechanism to cope with his demons. It was a symptom. It was a symptom, correct. Are we in it? In 2008, the two Corys confronted each other on their reality show about the dark past they shared. You let me get around in my life, man. Wait, so to speak. When I was about 14 and a half, and I'm saying this right now. What'd you do, man, when you saw that going down when I was 14 to me? What'd you do? You knew about it. You want to talk about the truth? Okay, well, then let's talk about the truth. I was being molested at the same time by somebody else. What'd you do? You know, there's a lot of good people in this industry, but there's also a lot of really, really sick, corrupt people in this industry. And there are people in this industry who have gotten away with it for so long that they feel they're above the law. Hmm. And that's got to change. That's got to stop. We contacted Corey Haim's mother. In an email, she said, I'm not willing to discuss or respond to anything Corey Feldman has to say. I wish he would talk about himself only and leave my son out of it. Is there a dark side to child stardom? Definitely. I think a lot of kids don't really want to do it. I think that the parents want to do it more than the kids. Chris Snyder says for most child stars, it's the parents that can cause more damage. And he would know, having managed with his late boss, Iris Burton, some of the most iconic child stars, including Feldman, River Phoenix, and Drew Barrymore. The biggest problem in the whole thing is when the parents start to live through the kids and quit their jobs and buy expensive houses, buy expensive cars, And the parents aren't understanding it's not going to go on forever. And it just wrecks everything. Feldman's parents managed his career until the money came between them. I got legally emancipated by going to the producer's pension health and welfare plan myself at 14 years old and saying, what were my earnings and what's left? Earnings, by the time I was 13 years old, a million dollars, which is really not that much money. But in those days it was. You know, in the late 70s, early 80s, that was a good chunk of change. And how much was left? 40000 
And guess what? When I went in for the emancipation trial, my father said, since I spent my time with you on your last film and took it away from my office where I should have been focused, instead, I'm going to ask you for that $40,000 back as repayment for the money that I lost in my business. You had to pay your dad. Correct. You can check the court filings. That was a fact. Wow. So I started at zero at 15 years old, coming out of the hole. We asked the court for the records, but they're sealed. In a statement, Corey's father, Bob Feldman, told us any money that the court awarded is a fraction of his claim. And this was a reimbursement for strictly professional expenses. For instance, private school, a publicist, professional wardrobe, traveling expenses, and lots more. This helped to save his career while he was in trouble with drug problems. I thought I was doing the best for my son, and I am always here for him. Child stardom is not a dream Feldman has for his own son. I'll see you in a minute. He is, after all, one of the few stars who doesn't let his child get photographed on the red carpet. Would you ever put your own kid into the industry? No, absolutely not. Never? Never. I believe that everybody in this world should have the freedom of choice. And child stars don't? Child stars have nothing. They have nothing. They have no choice. I was never taught how to have a family. I was never taught how to raise a child because I wasn't raised properly. I was never taught how to care for somebody because I was never shown genuine love. I was shown business. This is what you do. Here's how you read a contract. I knew how to read a contract by 10 years old, but I didn't know what it meant for somebody to come in and tell me they love me and kiss me goodnight. Hmm. That's a problem.